stuffing my face for this episode, too. <laughs> I mean, it's Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to grab I'm gonna grab a few myself. I already have three over here, but go ahead and grab me another one, would you? <laughs> oh, I'll grab more. Yeah, make... grab like a... Just to make, them a, make a nice... Make a nice heap over here. Yeah. I mean, it's after Halloween. We have chocolates. I also got some Kit Kats, too. So. Cool. Take whatever you like. All right. All right. I think we're good to go. Are we ready to dive into this? I am ready. Okay. Three, two, one. What? Wait, why am I seeming, Why am I even counting down? We're already recording. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That was a it's been recording for like a minute now. That's a flub on my part. Okay. Anyway, screw it. We're live. Let's do this. Cool. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the General Geekery Podcast. Woo! The, the podcast where we geek out about all that we love to geek out about with no remorse, no regrets, and with all the enthusiasm in the world. I'm so tired. Well, don't worry. That's why, that's why we got the chocolate. Woo! -hoo! Yay. Sugar. Anyway. Yeah, sugar. As always. What can go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> As always, this is Donald Kaczynski, your resident coffee ninja by day, actor, gamer, streamer by night. Um, and with me, as always, um, is uh, Hannah Kubiak, dice slinger extraordinaire, artiste, the maestro of the brush strokes herself, and uh, I'm just going to give her a new title, Lord of All Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All hail. <laughs> hail the Lord of the Peanut Butter Cups. All hail. Anyway... Today, if I'm not mistaken, Hannah, we're bringing back another segment that we had um, mm -hmm. previously. We are doing Monster Manual Mayhem again. Volume 2. Volume 2. And yes, I am going to be titling it Volume 2. Okay. Um, and so, we are going to be talking about another creature from the Monster Manual. Last time I went a little bit crazy and I picked three. But I kept it at one this time. We're going to be talking about the Banshee. Ooh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. For those that have not seen the first Monster Manual Mayhem episode, um, definitely go check that out. Mm -hmm. How we did it, um, Hannah is a, as I said before, she is an extensive player of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. She is part of two, three campaigns. I know you're part of the one for Loaded Dice Adventures, but I didn't know if you were. Mm -hmm. You had another one. I do. There's 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 another one that I'm part of as well, and then another one that I sometimes pop in on. Okay. If my schedule allows. Oh, okay. So, um, how we did it last time, mm -hmm. um, basically Hannah, um, has took, t taken a look at, like, the monster index, like, that it is in Dungeons and Dragons, like, all these mm -hmm. different monsters, and we talk about, um, the monster's, um, appearances in the games, its origins, where it came from, mm -hmm. and how it's implemented into, um, uh, the game and world of Dungeons and Dragons itself. Yep. Last time we talked about um, Medusa's, Gorgons, and uh, what was the third one? Medusa. They were all Gorgons, related. To, they were all related to each other. And um, I wanted to say basilisks. Be, basilisks. That's what it was. For some. It, I, and for the last time, a Medusa is not a creature. Medusa is a woman who was changed into a Gorgon. She was one of the three Gorgon sisters, along with Uriah and Stetheno. Yep. So keep keep that in mind for all you people. Precisely. That are... Lest ye forget, Medusa is a person, a fictional person. <laughs> this is she. She has actually gone on record in saying that this is actually a pet peeve of hers. It is. Yes. When people say, yeah. When people say that, um, oh yeah, it was a Medusa. I'm like, you mean a Gorgon, right? But Medusa was a Gorgon. It's like saying Frankenstein's monster was called Frankenstein. Oh man, you would you would actually hate um parts of Castlevania too because apparently there's an enemy in there called a uh, Medusa head. Is it her actual head? It is an actual it is an actual Gorgon head, but I, not necessarily Medusa's head. I can neither confirm nor deny. I have to relook into the lore a little bit. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so there's a sword directly behind you if you need to swing at something. So. Oh. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I directed her towards the weaponry, but... Oh, this is a good sword. She's just admiring the blade. Mm, yes. now, this hang is the full width of the blade. 
I was rewatching. I was rewatching that movie the earlier. It's still so good. Which one? I just, For, I just first one. I just quoted two movies just there. Yeah, you quoted Lord of the Rings, and then you went to P- Curse of the Black Pearl. Good, you're on my wavelength. Well done. I I, I, know, I know exact <laughs> I know exactly what you're going with. Oh man. Okay, so the Banshee in the Monster Manual. I think you have it open as well. I I looked it up just because I'm unfamiliar with this. The Banshee is a medium undead, chaotic evil, and um, it is. Oh, where's the description? The woeful banshee is a spiteful creature formed from the spirit of a female elf. Its face is wreathed in a wild tangle of hair, its body clad in wispy rags that flutter and stream around it. So, um... This right here, right? Yep, that's that's it. Okay, you know what this artwork reminds me? I'm sorry to detail it off that. You remember the scene from Two Towers where they're going through the bog? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This is what this is reminding me of. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. I needed to throw that out there. What's up? And um, the thing about Banshees that is most well-known is that they have this horrifying, wailing, screaming sound that they make. Oof. So, um, you can only do it once per day in the Monster Manual, though. The Banshee releases a mournful wail, provided that she isn't in sunlight. The wail has no effect on constructs and undead. All other creatures within 30 feet that can hear her make a constitution saving throw. On a failure, a creature drops to zero hit points. What? (laughs) Oh, okay. So I finally understand where that um, expression, screaming like a banshee, comes from. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That is a really powerful effect. You gotta make your saving throw where you drop to zero hit points? Jesus! fuck. Okay. Um... The Banshee, it's a its a ghost, so it has incorporeal movement. It can move through other creatures and objects as if they... Oh, as if they were difficult terrain. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically it looks like this is... This is uh, just a, an evil thing that attacks you. And um, I looked up a lot of stuff about um, sort of... The lore behind banshees and stuff, okay. and um, most of the lore comes from Ireland. Although there are a lot of oh. other, um, yeah, there I love was... I love Irish and Celtic myth. Oh yes, me too. Yeah, there was this episode of uh, Su- Supernatural that was about a banshee, and it started in um, it started in 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 Ireland, um, and we get to meet this little kid that had a run in with the banshee and it like killed her family and stuff. Uh-huh. Um which is another thing about a banshee that is kind of um I guess embellished is a lot of banshees in like well in Dungeons and Dragons they'll try and kill you in that episode of Supernatural they'll try and kill you but in the in the in the um folklore and um, like Irish and Celtic folklore, the banshee is not so, isn't isn't a um, it doesn't attack or kill you. It just it serves as a death omen. So when you hear or see it, it's just warning you that death is going to happen. Oh. So um, here's something from Britannica.com. Um, it defines a banshee as a supernatural being in Irish and other Celtic folklore whose mournful keening or wailing screaming of lamentation at night was believed to foretell the death of a member of the family of the person who heard the spirit. So she's typically dressed in gray or white. Um, and the, uh, the word uh, banshee, um, it's spelled like this in... Um, in Celtic beansy but oh. it's pronounced banshee because um, Irish is weird um, the the word means woman of the fairy mounds which I think probably has something to do with like burial burial grounds and stuff right um, plus, and, a, plus a lot of supernatural creatures in like Irish and Celtic myth are usually bound bet- as generalized as like fairy fairy mm-hmm yeah, and it said that that it is a, it is some sort of fairy, fairy woman, and we'll we'll get to that in a second. So yeah, the monster manual says it's some it's the, it's a dead elf, but look, a ladybug. 
Uh, oh. He's not doing any harm. Just leave him in there. Ah! It's okay. Um. Sorry, a ladybug just flew on the laptop. And, um, I've seen some of these, like, burial mounds in Ireland. Um, they're called dolmen. Mm-hmm. And they are really spooky. And they're kind of just, like, on this on this big, flat heath that's made up of, like, rock and these, like, scrub brushes. It's just, like, the only thing standing. And it's this really, really windy landscape. And you can hear the wind whistling and stuff. And you can kind of... Kind of tell where these uh, le- these legends may have come from. How do you how do you spell that? What the the, the name of the grave? The oh dol- dol- dolmen D O L M E N. Okay. And yeah, so it kind of looks like a mini Stonehenge kind of thing. So um. Oh in- my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. I think that's the exactly the one that I did my little sketch based on here. <laughs> so cool. cool. And, um, so the Banshee is typically seen dressed in gray or white, um, and serves as a, um, a warning to people of impending death. Um, <clears throat> so, there's another, there's another spirit called the, um, Lenhanshe? Lenhanshi. Leon Shi. Leon Shi, called um, which means fairy mistress, which is a different kind of spirit that I think gets mixed up with banshees all the time. And um, uh, the the poet, I think it's the poet W W B Yeats describes the um, Leon Shi. Leon. Leon Shi. Leon Shi. Um, he says of them, they um, seek the love of mortals. If the mortals refuse, she becomes their slave. But if they consent, they are hers. She is the Gaelic muse inspiring those she possesses. Gaelic poets die young because she wants to claim their souls. <laughs> Fair enough. For the record, the reason why I know the pronunciation of that is um, uh, that uh, Leon Shi is actually a summon that is used in a video game that I play. <laughs> Not Leon Shi. And it actually does, like, the pronunciation for all that, so. Cool. I, I yeah. could be wrong, but, um, I don't know my, um, uh, Celtic or Gaelic, like, pronunciations <laughs> for any of that, so mm-hmm. I'll probably well, need to brush up on that. Yeah, we'll go with it. So, here's the origin of the Banshee. That's kind of the description of what they're like and everything. Um, they're sort of, yeah, they're dressed in gray or white and there's sort of um differing opinions of what they look like some people describe them as being like this old withered crone and other people describe them as being these like beautiful young ethereal ghost women you know it really depends but the origin which i got if you can believe it from this website called cladadesign.com okay um, in medieval times, women were hired as keeners to sing at the graveside, um, at funerals. Uh, the more people mourning at a funeral, the greater the person. And for really, really great people, it's said that a fairy woman would come and sing, and may even have been part of the household. Uh, keeners were often... Oh, this is a fun fact. Keeners were often paid in alcohol, which may have led for them to them becoming drunken old women, which explains how the legend morphed into this idea that a banshee is like a crone person. Love you, Ireland. Oh, uh, yes. <clears throat> yes, to, to, to have an occupation where you get paid in alcohol. Indeed. Oh, uh, would have been... A, it's, a, it's a dream. I'm kind, of su- um, kind of surprised that uh, the state of Wisconsin doesn't have anything like that, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, the Banshee is also described to have long silver hair, which she combs. And for this reason, people are superstitious people do not like to pick up dropped combs because they might be ensnared by the Banshee if they do that. Ah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, so... The Banshee sort of comes from this uh, just sort of human human fascination and fear uh, uh, surrounding death. And it just sort of, 
I think that having to do with the, uh, the, the keeners at the funeral, if, if you have enough, um, mourners somewhere, like maybe they get a better place in the great beyond or something, like a lot of our legends surrounding death have to do with our uncertainty about what's beyond kind of. Mm -hmm. And, um, there is this. There's this episode of this show, uh, this this uh, podcast called Lore. Um, it's an episode called Facets, which is all about like death rituals and stuff like that. So I just want to I want to credit that podcast um, with some of the information that I got from there. Like um, the uh, the another occupation having to do with death that no longer exists was called the sin eater. Okay. Yeah, if somebody died without being able to prepare or receive rites or be blessed or something, um, they would hire this person. They would hire a sin eater who would basically come and um, go into the room with the body um, and shut the door, and there would be um, some bread on the body and the sin eater would eat the bread and like take the uh take the person's sin upon themselves Ooh. yeah which i thought was really cool and the like the christian overtones of that just wow um <laughs> but um <laughs> and so that's that's just another sort of thing that people do like an occupation having to do with with death and mourning that just becomes sort of like sin eaters are sort of ostracized kind of like kind of like the uh the keening women with their alcohol or whatever nice yeah so um i was holding up this bubble because i just remembered something that um as we were talking through this mm-hmm. i have actually come across like some of the mythology of the banshee before but when i was researching a different mythological creature from celtic lore okay I'd, um have you heard of the dulahan no so tell me about the dulahan a dulahan um is is a headless rider that um huh. in in celtic lore the dulahan is a headless rider that is basically um the farrier of souls and yeah and i i i did i did a short story about a dulahan in college and i was researching um about like these um their origins and everything like that and apparently if the banshee is the banshee um is supposed to signal the death suppose mm-hmm. like you said the Dulahan is the one that carries away the soul of the dying person. <laughs> the Dulahan rides throughout all of the um the fields of Ireland and mm-hmm. when the Dulahan stops, it is apparently to to claim the soul of a person who is dying. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's just a generalized version of it. There's so much more to it, but Oh my gosh. Tied in tied in with like um this mythology like surrounding like um a person like a person's death like when mm-hmm. the time comes and all these different so on i felt like that would be like another fine layer to add on top of there oh yeah i love it and i know as much as you love mythology i think you would love to like research like research that the Duohan. i would love to i love it. <laughs> it, yeah. it it's a headless rider and it carries its own head oh sick mm-hmm. i love it Kind of like the, yeah, kind of like the Headless Horseman in, um... Kind of like Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm, like Sleepy Hollow. Basically. There you go. Oh, Spooktober is over, man. <laughs> hey, myth- hey, mythology can spook at any time of the year. It doesn't have to be reserved for Spooktober. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry about that sidetrack. Oh, no, of course, that, that was fine. Okay, so, here is a, um... There's this, there's this story of, um... It's an Irish story about the McQuillan family. Um, there was a daughter of the McQuillan family. They lived in uh, Dunluce Castle. And she 
there was an arranged marriage made for her. Um, her name was Maeve. Um, but she actually loved somebody else, and they eloped together, um, found a boat, um, but a storm dashed them to pieces, and it's said that she remains in the castle, and you can hear her weeping through the halls and stuff. Like, Ooh. these kind of stories are all over the place. And the thing about the boat and everything um, leads me to um, the fact that a lot of these legends of of the uh, banshees sort of in different cultures they all come from they all have sort of connection to the water in some way like they are like Mm -hmm. mourning a drowning or something which maybe maybe it has to do with sort of like i only just thought of this like people who are getting dashed on the rocks coming in from a storm or something on the sea um maybe there's something about like something about that like somebody trying to warn them that they're going to run into the rocks i don't know um Mm -hmm. but all this stuff having to do with drowning and stuff leads me to the Aztecs. Okay, I can, all right. <laughs> How are you going to tie this in? Let let's hear this. Okay, it dates back to the Aztecs, a um, a uh, sort of s- story throughout La- um, Latin America of this of this wailing woman um, wearing the white of grief. Um, Mourning her drowned children. This is the legend of La Llorona. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. I saw this movie. It was freaky. Okay. Hit it. So, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the story goes that this woman married a wealthy ranchero, um, but when he when she found out that he was he was seeing another woman she uh drowned both of their children in revenge kind of like medea and then she drowned herself and so then there's this sort of legend that la llorona is on the lookout for children now and like she'll she'll go after them and stuff which is not exactly um which is not exactly banshee material of them being like just warning people of death but you know it's got that sort of same right it's got the same vibe you know like yeah the the weeping woman and um it's all over the place all this mythology and stuff there's um there's different um like legends of like child eaters um these weird like demon women um who do things like this like there's a hebrew legend of lilith who is um i forget what the what it was from it was like some sort of really really old ancient text that they say that Lilith was Adam's first wife or she was a demon her name translates as night hag or screech owl um and Lilith is said to be this sort of like sexually wanton demon who steals babies um and she um and kills her own children uh quote when she finds nothing else turns upon her own children um wow so like there's this whole thing in the bible where uh god is going to destroy sodom and gomorrah the two really sinful towns or whatever and moses is like well wait don't be like lilith and kill your own children like (laughs) oh man so she's said to be this sort of like yeah child killer child killing women um let's go to greece um, there is a creature called a Lamia. Um, she became a child-eating monster after her children were destroyed by Hera, Isn't... who was jealous of Lamia for, um, 
her philanderings with Zeus. <laughs> I feel like Lamia is like a serpent esque. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I am right. All yeah, right. I am thinking of the right um, one. And the, the Lamia is she like she, yeah she cursed her and she became this sort of like half snake woman who now sort of like goes and like tries to uh, find children to eat. Um, it's death. Um, oh, yeah, but I don't know, just the really, the rich sort of, uh, traditions, I guess. Like when you think about, when we think about death, we can get really macabre. Oh, yeah. And, oh, just... That's kind of all I have, is just all these different little examples of uh, the, yeah, I guess just this, this death omen of a woman. That's, that, that is such an incredible backstory. Mm-hmm. How, are the, how are Banshees implemented in, like, um, Dungeons and Dragons, like, usually? Are they more of, like, a, like a common occurrence, or are they more like a, like a special kind of occurrence? Like They, I would say, are probably... Like, uh, they're not, they're not like, um, big boss material. Like, they each have, they have 58 hit points and an armor class of 12. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Fair enough. yeah, they, I mean, the, the, the whale that will, that they have once a day is pretty, uh, pretty horrifying like but other than that they're just kind of just these weird undead savage things dang yeah i've got um let's see oh i totally missed this one. Oh, what's up this one is uh the story of this guy who um his name was sarif abdurrahman in like 1760, he set out on his own from his uh, home country of or home island of Borneo. Um, he found a foreign wife, um, and when he returned home, his father like disapproved of the way that he had lived and his his wantonness and stuff. So he was banished, and he found a haunted island to build a new city on. Um, and this is from uh, this is from the lore, um, the lore podcast. Um, the lore. The lore. Um, the island was haunted by Pat- Pon- Pontianac. Pontianac, vampiric ghosts of women who died while pregnant. They take the form of a white dressed woman and they make a horrible sound and eat people's organs. If they catch you, they like they like claw you open and eat your intestines and stuff. I love mythology. I know. It's I so love cool. mythology and so much. Apparently this guy it was very unsatisfying because this guy, Abdurrahman, he just fired cannons on the island until they all were gone. <laughs> and he named the island uh Pontianac after these creatures. And Oh, so that's where that comes from. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't know what this I don't know what what this story is supposed to say if it's just like I feel like it's a filler story. Yeah, I mean I did want to fill time with this, but you <laughs> Well, know. not not like not <laughs> like that. Not like that. Yeah, I mean possibly that the well, these banshees and everything, they represent death. And I think some people really wish that you could just if you are strong enough and powerful enough, and if you have enough cannons, you can stave off death. That's that's but you fair. really, but you really can't because death is incorporeal and ghostly, and cannot be killed by cannonballs alone. Any single story where people are trying to ward off death with immortality of mm-hmm. any kind of sense. Mm-hmm. Death always comes. It does not matter. It will always <laughs> come in one way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. You can try to prevent. It will catch up to you in time. Yeah. Nothing lasts forever. Something else that is 
It's not a banshee, but it is a death omen. And I think it's really interesting. Have you heard of the Mothman? I actually have. Really? Um, yeah, my brother um, uh, talked about it um, at one point. I mm -hmm. I th don't remember the exact details of like like the death omen that it entails. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's like a sight of it or like a vision or anything like that. Yeah, I'm actually working on a short story about a Mothman. But... <laughs> that's, a, that's incredible! Um, okay, Mothman. So, um... Originally, so the, the Mothman, here's what it looks like. It's West Virginia folklore. This is what it's, this is what it's like, reported to look like. Like this furry little person. Like, well, it's a big, it's a giant moth with red eyes. Oh my god, it looks like a mix, <clears throat> it looks like a mix between Mothra and the gargoyles from Gargoyle. Mm-hmm, yeah, like a moth gargoyle. This is what people, some people think is a picture, a photograph of Mothman flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> Almost in the shape of a broken up helicopter. I'm not gonna lie. Really? Wait, wait, wait. Where? Like, for, okay. For some reason, like, it, it took me a minute. It may just because, like, I'm seeing this with, like without my glasses. Mm -hmm. But like, the, this looks like the tail end of a helicopter, and mm -hmm. like, this looks like it's like b breaking off. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like it looks. Those like... are his little legs. That's incredible. Though. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but but on a second look, I'm like, no, that can't be a helicopter. What am I saying? Yeah, in West Virginia, the Mothman. Is a creature reportedly seen in the uh, Point Pleasant area um, in uh, 1966. And in the, the first newspaper report was published in the Point Pleasant Register um, that says, Couples see man-sized bird creature something. <laughs> is that legitimately what it said? Yes! Look at it. Man-sized bird creature something. Where did this person get their journalism degree? Um, I don't know, man. But... I have I have questions. Yeah, Point Pleasant, West Virginia is where he makes his home. But he has been seen in other places. Um, so... There is a, um... There's a book... Um, oh, this is all from Wikipedia, just so you know. Okay, fair um, The Mothman was introduced to a wider audience by Gray Barker in uh, 1970 and was later popularized by John Keel in his 1975 book The Mothman Prophecies, claiming that there were supernatural events related to the sightings and a connection to the collapse of the Silver Bridge, which is like something that happened in... Uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where this bridge collapsed, people died, and that uh. was... That was after people had seen the Mothman, and so they started to make connections to <laughs> whenever they saw the Mothman, not long afterwards, some terrible catastrophe would happen. So the conspiracy, like, theorists, like, um, uh, mm -hmm. gears started mm -hmm. turning. Yeah. So apparently these two young couples from Point Pleasant who saw the bird creature something. Quote, unquote. <laughs> um... <laughs> They saw a large gray creature whose eyes glowed red when the car's headlights picked it up. They described it as this big flying man with 10-foot wings who was following their car while they were driving. Um, and, like, other people started to report seeing a large bird with red eyes. Um, people think, like, some people thought that it was maybe a, um unusually large heron. Um, called a shite poke. <laughs> <laughs> um, the eyes glowed like bicycle reflectors, which also made people think that it might have been uh, some sort of big owl. Wow. Um, so, um, people started to, this, uh, bridge collapsed in, uh, 1967 and, uh, 46 people died. And the incident Jeez. gave rise to the, like, people connecting the Mothman sightings to the bridge collapse. Um, and, okay, here's a couple of other things that people thought that the Mothman might be connected to. According to a uh, Georgian newspaper, oh gosh, Zvodmnyanya Gruzia. Let me see the name. <laughs> According to Georgian newspaper, Zvobania Gruzia. Zvobania Gruzia. Zvobania Gruzia. 
Russian UFOologists claimed that Mothman sightings in Moscow foreshadowed the 1999 Russian apartment bombings. Nah, that's that, that's not Mothman. That's Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. <laughs> um, okay, here's another one. In 2016, WCHS TV published a photo purported to be of Mothman, taken by an anonymous man while driving on Route Two. Um, science writer Sharon A. Hill proposed that the photo showed a bird, perhaps an owl, carrying a frog or snake away, and wrote that there is zero reason to suspect it is the Mothman as described in legend. There are too many far more reasonable explanations. There is even a festival and a statue of Mothman. <laughs> Every, um... It's incredible. Yeah, it's called the Annual Mothman Festival, and it started in 2002. And, um, they, they celebrate the local legacy in the town. Um... There's a 12-foot-tall metallic statue of the creature. Um, <laughs> the festival is held on the third weekend of every September. Oh, man, we missed it. <laughs> um, I, I, I doubt they would have done it this year. Oh, goodness. In June of 2020, a petition was started to replace all Confederate statues in the United States with statues of Mothman. <laughs> you're, you're kidding. No! <laughs> I'm I, literally I just a... reading Wikipedia. Let me you. see this. <laughs> people are insane about this stuff oh my goodness internet i love you i love you i love you you trolling trolling sobs mm -hmm. i love you and so um people thought that people thought that the um mothman was his appearance was causing these terrible things to happen but then people started to think that maybe the Mothman was trying to... Because people were filled with, like, um, just... Um, they were filled with, with terror at the sight of this thing. It just, like, like unreasonably terrified seeing this thing. And they would try and run away from it. And people started to think that perhaps the Mothman was not causing the terrible things to happen, but was, like... A death omen, like portending that these things are going to happen, like a dangerous catastrophe, and was trying to like scare people away from where the bad thing was going to happen. Interesting. Um, so yeah, like a death omen, but it really only happens when it's a really catastrophic thing that if, that affects more than like like a bunch of people, like the bridge collapse with forty six people. Um, it's also said that Mothman had been sighted. Before Chernobyl. What? And before 9-11. And there's a photograph of him <laughs> where he showed up at 9-11, like, outside, by the, um, by the world, by the, um, the World Trade Center. What? Oh, uh, let I, me see. I, I'm going to look it up. I... Mothman photo. World Trade Center. Okay. Huh. I mean, it does kind of just look like a big bird, but... Okay. Here is... Here is the, uh... This is New York somewhere. Oh, gosh. Hold on. And... No, that's not real. <laughs> okay, here he is. And this is... I, I'm gonna look up what day this was taken, but... There he is, flying. It might just be a big bird. I don't know. Looks like it. I, I swear, if you look at it in the wrong way, it looks like a trapeze art, artist. Yeah, it does. It kind of looks like a person, kind of like. Yeah, when was this taken? Oh, yeah, and then here's the one of him at Point Pleasant again. It does, has it a cover from a couple of different angles. Um. <laughs> what on earth? Okay, okay. Um, when was the World Trade Center Mothman picture taken? <laughs> um, yeah, like, it's just, it's just everywhere, and it's, it's, it's fascinating, oh the my. Mothman. 
Okay, so <laughs> this entire thing of uh, the Banshee, for some reason, reminded me of... Uh, it reminded me of this um, short film that I saw last year. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, the entire synopsis of it, um, this girl has her birthday and uh, surrounded by her family, apparently since she turned like the i think it was like 17 or 18 that she turned mm -hmm. apparently um because in their family they gain a special like tr um f like a special friend that um is like a weird kind of creature like mm -hmm. that is far away and the closer it gets to you it means that you're getting more imminent to death ah! and if it's apparently right next to you and screaming you're about to die oh what is it what wait it's 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 a short it's a short film called Special Day. Special Day. Okay. It was released in uh, 2019. It's a short film. Yes, directed by uh, Teal Greyhavens. Oh. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. You can you can go check this out. Okay. It's actually re it's actually not bad. I really I really like this. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I saw it. Um. I, I just saw it, um, last Halloween I went to go see a version, uh, I went to go see a screening of, uh, Evil Dead, and they were playing, oh. like, a bunch of different horror short films nice. prior to that, and that was one of the ones they played, and for some reason we were talking about, like, um, uh, the specifics of the Banshee, um, yeah. being this, um, death is near, of, like, with the scream, mm -hmm. reminded me of, uh, yeah. this specific, uh, short film. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. I want to check that out. Oh, definitely check that out. It's so it, It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But, oh. and and even, like, in other, like, uh, pop culture, like, I mean, of course, Banshee has become, like, a household name with, like, scream, mm -hmm. Screaming Like a Banshee, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember there was an episode of the television show Gargoyles that utilized, like, Celtic folklore um, with, like, the Banshee, um, the Irish hero Q. Q. Um, mm -hmm. things like that. But yeah, damn! What what an interesting backstory. Death omens. You, you got and just the fact wait. that you don't. It's sort of like that. You don't know the time nor the hour, but like it's just the most uncertain thing in your life is when are you gonna die? And I feel like this sort of haunting um, folklore that sort of follows us throughout uh, follows us throughout the different cultures and stuff. Um, is just our way of trying to make it something uncertain yeah. a little bit more certain, even if it's terrifying. Indeed. Oh, God, Celtic mythology. I can always trust you for two things. One, bring out some weird abstract concepts of death, and two, have all of your freaking folklore heroes be sex-starved maniacs. Yep, pretty much. Thank you, Celtic folklore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It made me, well, because I always think about Lord of the Rings whenever I can. It made me think of that um, scene from the extended edition of The Two Towers when Eowyn sings that funeral song for her cousin. Oh. I cry every time. And, oh, I did so much research about it because I was just, like, thinking about it. And I was like, oh, I wonder where did the music for the, or the, the words for the funeral of Theodred come from? Because I looked in the book and it's not in the book. Apparently uh. it was, like written by uh, Philippa Boyens and then translated into, I think, Old English by somebody named David Salo. Yeah, that was a, that was a nice addition to the extent for that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, then, I love the, it. The, then again, then again, I'm, then again, I'm a huge lover of uh, anything Rohan, so, you know. <laughs> yes. That's me. Oh, man. And just, like, the, the, the way that they bury the people in, like, the little, like, mounds, the yeah. burial mounds. Very, very almost reminiscent of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Like Flowers. Woman of the Fairy Mounds. That's Lo what Banshee means. Indeed. Long has it grown on the tombs of my forebears. Now it shall rest on the grave of my son. <laughs> you can tell I love Theoden. Yeah. My God. Oh, yeah. He is the most quotable Lord of the Rings character, I feel like. Like, I have a Theoden quote for almost any situation. One of the top ten. Yep. Easily. Yep. Well, he has, like, there's, like, a how to say different things in a in a way that only Theoden would say them. Like, right. I can't tell you how many times me or my roommate Sarah have come home from work and just laid down on the ground and be like, my body is broken. <laughs> what happened to the horse and the rider? <laughs> there is the horn that was blowing. 
What can men yeah. do send against such reckless hate? Oh, yeah, at work all the time. If we're just, you know, slammed with all these bodies, I just look around and I'm like, so much death. <laughs> no, so uh, much death. No, retail work. We, retail workers on Black Friday, <laughs> waiting, wa- waiting for, pe- waiting for people like lining up outside. What can what can man do against such reckless hate? <laughs> Have you seen the movie where it's? It's it's like it's smash like intercut like Theoden's lines and then people outside of like Walmart like banging on the doors. It's like it's like they're breaking it down. So much death and it's like ah! brace the gate. Brace the gate. What can man do against such reckless hate? Beautiful. I want a TV. I want a TV. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my Ride god. Ride out with me. <laughs> for death and glory. For, for, for your pe- for death and glory for your people. And the red dawn. Death. Yes. De- oh wait, that's a completely different epic Rohan charge. But, True. You know, whatever. E- even still, yeah, I think th- I think that's pretty much it. That's what I got. That's everything. Ah. Uh, this I wrote, I wrote out the entire funeral song because I thought it was just. So... I that's think I, 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 th- I think you're. I would say you're obsessed, but then again, I also love Lord of the Rings too. Yeah, so yeah. I will say nothing. Good on you. Thank you. <laughs> Anywho, that wraps this up today. I think so. All right. Thank you guys so much again for listening to episode 54 of the General Geekery Podcast, Monster Manual Mayhem Volume 2. Volume 2. All about banshees. For the, if you guys like what you heard, please make sure to follow us wherever we can be found. We are on uh, Spotify. We are on Spreaker. We are on Apple Podcasts. And if you don't have access to any of those streaming platforms, please check us out on uh, my personal YouTube channel, Anime Rev Productions, where we have all the episodes uploaded there as well. For um, socials, you can, guys can check us out at General Geekery on Instagram and at Gen Geek Podcast on Twitter and Facebook. Hannah, where can they check you out at? Well, you can find me rolling dice with my party every Monday at 7.30 Central on um, on uh, twitch.tv slash loaded dice adventures i play petra the dragonborn ranger rogue uh it's tons of fun and um you can also listen to my other podcast that i do with my mom called splanknicks where we talk about books movies and tabletop gaming from the perspective of two different generations and if you are keen to follow me on instagram you can do that at pythian legume Excellent. And you guys can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at MK 7 You can also find me on Twitch.tv as well at MK 7 where I play a bunch of different games. Um, most of them RPG-based, but I have a lot of fun with hanging out with my chat room, just uh, having all the fun, doing a bunch of different funny voices, and uh, making everybody smile, bringing a little bit of happiness to the world um, uh, one smile at a time. And also, um, for those that are interested in supporting the podcast, we now have our Patreon up and about. Woo! You you guys can check us out on patreon.com forward slash general geekery. Yep. All right. I was just making sure it was general geekery and not general geekery podcast. Oh, wait. Oh, let me just look it up really quickly. We'll, we'll have the link for it in the episode. Yep. 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 We will. We'll have the link for it in the episode. Um, we're still working out um, some logistics about... Um, uh, rewards for the specific tiers Mm -hmm. but um stuff you guys can um uh expect in the future is a polls about which um uh, topics you guys want us to talk about we may even do special polls for um uh, upcoming episodes involving monster manual mayhem i i I find this a really good recurring segment really oh good yeah i i i enjoy i enjoy learning about like um uh, like the mythologies of like certain creatures that are based on so it's always a lot of fun oh i love it and a bunch of different topics and everything like that. We are also planning some other stuff with the Patreon as well, so definitely go check that out. Um, I think that's going to be uh, it for this episode, unless you have anything else to add? Nope, nothing else to add. All right, then uh, let's roll on out of here. Thank you guys so much again for listening to this episode of the podcast, episode 54, all about Monster Manual Mayhem Volume 2. For Hannah Kubiak, I'm Donald Kaczynski, and uh, until next time, guys, keep your eyes out. Beware of the Banshee, but always remember, keep your geek on. Always. Clink, clink. All sorts of weird beverage containers today. (laughs) Later, guys.